tell me if this sounds about right. You're at a point in your business where you're feeling so much frustration and even some resentment because you know you're good at what you do. You're putting out great stuff. You feel like you're showing up and putting in all the effort, yet you watch even other people who are in your same industry seemingly cash in on repeat when you just have sales somewhat trickling in with slow to no growth. And it leaves you absolutely perplexed. What am I doing wrong? I must be doing something wrong. I don't know what it is. You've overthought about this. You've overanalyzed about this. You even asked other people about it. You might have even hired coaches or hired consultants, spent a fortune on ads and done other things. And really not much has gotten you the growth or to where you know you should really be at right now in your business. Like, it just doesn't make sense. And you want someone to serve it to you straight. No bullshit. Like even if it stings, you can handle it. You don't want anyone tap dancing around you. Like your livelihood is at stake. Your life is at stake. Your sanity is at stake. And you just want to know what's up and how to fix it. And you're willing to do that work. I made this episode for you. I know I have been in this exact spot at several different times over the last 16 years, having two multi-million dollar businesses. And there is nothing that feels more taxing, nothing that zaps your energy more and your zest for your business. And it can really, really mess with your mind and put you in a really crappy space. And it's like a helpless feeling because you're willing to do the work. You're willing to even invest. Like you're willing to do the stuff but you've got to know what the hell it is first. And you're spending so much mental and physical energy trying to figure it out. And you're coming up empty. I've got you. I'm going to tell you in this episode why you're not generating significant cash growth and what the hell to do about it. What up, my people, my posse, my fellow crazies. It's your host, Tiffany Carter. And this is the show that is going to help you grow your business, your bank account, that big, beautiful brain of yours, your abundance, your relationships, and everything in between. But I've got a rant first, just a small tiff rant. Something I noticed in my travels throughout Europe, and I know I see this all the time, in the US and I see it in Canada too. Actually, I don't see it in Mexico. I've got to give Mexico a shout out for that. But for sure in Canada and the US, all through Europe, all I mean I was in, I think I went to five different cities in Europe and every single hotel had this. A fucking scale. What is going on? Who is a psychopath listening to the show that you weigh yourself especially when you are traveling and on vacation, even if you're not even traveling on business, why are we weighing ourselves? I don't like it. I know there's a lot of people who struggle with addiction or they've um, removed alcohol from their lives and they'll call ahead and have hotels remove like all the alcohol from the minibar. I think I might be having my assistant call the hotels and have them remove the damn scale. I don't want a fucking scale in the room. I don't want to see it. I never step on it. I don't use a scale, but like I find it so odd, like that this is a staple in hotel rooms. And what I find even more interesting is now this is going to make me sound so b bougie and it's whatever. I'm saying it anyway. I mean, I only stay at five star hotels. And I think though, because, you know, when I didn't have money and I wasn't staying at five-star hotels, I don't remember like at a courtyard Marriott, I'm telling you, there was not a, there was not a scale. Like it wasn't in the budget. I feel like it's only in like four and five-star hotels that you have a scale in the room. I need to know if any of you listening are psychopaths and use the scale because it's not helpful. Does it matter? Are you going to eat any differently? Do we need to know? And someone like me who has had, and I, you always have it. Once you've had an eating disorder, exercise addiction, you always have it. It's like an addict's always an addict. It's like how you manage it. 
But like after I consumed copious amounts of gelato and pasta and wine and Aperol spritzes, I hid that shit. I put a stack of towels over one. I put another in a closet. Like, I don't want to see it. That was my vent. Curious what your thoughts are. Of course, you can always reply to any of our emails. We read all of them. We can't reply to everyone, but the ones, but we do get some crazy ones and we do save those. We have a crazy, we have a crazy people folder for people who send us really crazy stuff. And then we have a love letter folder for those of you who send emails or reply to our emails. And I do this with my DMs too, that are just so lovely and so beautiful. And it makes us feel so good here at the team. It makes me feel great. And I cherish those. But about the scale, you need to tell me your thoughts. Like, take that out of the budget and give us more high end lotions, potions, and shampoos that we can take home. Hell, put, leave us a fucking designer candle in the room or a, like, or a scrunchie or a fucking hair tie. I don't want to see a scale. Anywho, <laughs> I digress. You're like, wait a second. Push play on this episode for me to hear about this. I want to hear about why I'm not generating the money in my business. Well, you know what? We talk about all the things on here. And if we're not making this fun and entertaining, this whole making money online, growing your business, creating freedom level wealth so you can have the lifestyle that you want and feel abundant and actually enjoy your life and not dread your life. Um, we got to be able to have fun. And the more fun you have, the more money you make. And we're also playing here, by the way, if you're watching on Project Me TV on YouTube, if you're not, you need to go subscribe and see some of the shit behind the scenes. Okay. There's interviews in bathtubs. There's interviews in beds. And right now I'm clearly playing uh, strip podcasting. <laughs> we are down to some micro shorts and a sports bra and my hair on the top of my head in a bun. I am boiling where my studio is at the beach house. Picture me sitting in a glass box that is hanging basically over the ocean. And it is very hot, even though I have the air conditioning on and the windows open. I mean, hey, I pay my own bills, so no one can yell at me that I'm cooling the outside. <laughs> Who was told that growing up? Stop eating the outside. Stop cooling the outside. I mean, I am the person when it's cold out. I have the heater on and the seat heater in the car and then the windows open. Zero fucks given. But I am boiling and I'm highly animated today. I am incredibly excited to serve it to you straight. You know, my promise to you, I took a, I don't know when, when was this? When was it like, it was months ago. Um, I believe it was this year, right? I took a two, two or three week hiatus from the show, which I had never done before. And I did it because I knew I wanted to cocoon myself and re-debut the show at a different level that it deserves. And I went next level zero fucks given with it, where not that I ever held back from you guys, but I definitely was a little more cautious about certain topics, certain things I said, and that get that got old. It got old. It got tiring. We're, we don't need to do that. You guys who listen to me enough know my heart. We get enough fucking emails from the people who can't handle the fact I talk about manifestation and God and that I swear and a woman of faith doesn't swear. It's like, that's between me and God. Last time I checked, God doesn't have a problem with it. And the universe doesn't seem to have a problem with it with me either. Okay, so we're going to be just okay here. And that leads to my first point. I'm going to I'm serving it really straight today. And you'll know from this episode, really a great insight of what it's like to be coached by me. Now, when you're coached by me, I say everything with love and depending on where your mental state is at the moment. Obviously, if you're in a spiral and a meltdown, I don't, I, I know how to get you out of those things, right? It's like, I don't sit there and go, and you need to do this and I'm going to smack you across the face. Sometimes you need to be, and 
thankfully I have had great coaches and mentors throughout the years that have done it for me. And it can be really hard to hear some of the stuff, but someone who is a great coach, truly a great friend, they're not always going to tell you what you want to hear. They're going to tell you what you need to hear in order to get to where you you're saying you want to go. Now, if you're not asking for my advice, paying for my advice, you're listening right now. So I'm assuming you want my advice. It is my job to tell you what's up, even at the risk of it pissing you off, of it triggering you. Um, you can go and pay and listen to some fantasy marketer who's going to tell you some bullshit where you can take the path of least resistance and do nothing and sit back. And I'm going to sit back and passively manifest and it's all going to happen. And you're going to see how that ends for you. And I always find it amazing when we get a handful of people a year, like in the posse membership, or even I've had clients, private clients of mine who have gone and, and, <laughs> and had amazing results working with me. I'm talking big time, six and seven figure, big results. And they like sing me from the rooftops and learned all the things. And then they go and hire someone that they suspect you know, might have some secret that Tiffany didn't know because that person is making it sound so easy and telling them, oh, you don't need to like, you know, really post any content at all or just post when you feel up, feel like it and you don't have to do this and you don't need to do this. That is how they market to you. It's bullshit. I'm going to, I I'm telling you it's bullshit. I'm not saying I know everything. I'm always learning, but listen, I am an investor in a lot of businesses I'm behind the scene of multi-billion and billion and million dollar companies. I, I've worked in 79 different industries in terms of coaching and mentoring people. Like, I know what's up, okay? And I feel like I needed to say that up front. A lot of you listening are already, I'm already vetted to you. You already know that. But if you're newer to me, I think it's important for your brain, for your ego to hear this so that you can really absorb this information and you have a choice. You could choose to not implement or do anything with what I'm telling you. And then what I would say is if you're not taking any actions that I'm suggesting that I'm sharing with you, there's something you really need to look at there. I want you to get curious, not in a self-blaming way, in a nasty way, but I want you to get curious why, if I'm being told by someone who has the receipts, who I, you know, feel I resonate with, who I feel I can trust is telling me this and I'm still not doing it. Is it that I really don't want this life? Is it that I really don't want this business? Is it that I really want to be doing something else, but I'm doing this because I thought I had to, because that's the only thing I could do to make money. Is it that you tried entrepreneurship and it's not for you? Is it that you have some other beliefs going on around money? Like you're, you're having fears of being seen. You're afraid of what's going to happen at a next level of success. You have unmet, unrealized money traumas and subconscious things going on that are blocking you from doing the thing. Well, then that that work has to be done at the same time. I have a subconscious mindset and energy coach. I have a life coach. Okay. I have a health coach. Now I have a fitness coach. Like I'm an fucking Olympian and I am going to be using a lot of Olympics analogies as that's what's going on right now. And I know it's so, whether you are into like a sport or not, like swimming, gymnastics, whatever it's, isn't it so motivating? I mean, I'm also like very into like working out and health, but like it is. Think of this. This is the creme de la creme. These people, a lot of these people made this team by a fraction of a second. You know, what one person was willing to do that one extra hour a day or hiring that additional coach or, you know, not going out when other people went out and drank or whatever. And that's what had them make the team. Do you want to be an Olympian of your own life? Or do you want to be someone who just like lets shit happen to you? Your success is, is literally inevitable. If you do what I tell you to do today, number one is this, you're not treating your business like a true business. You've kind of conned yourself into thinking that you are 
But when you really sit back and you hear me talking right now, maybe you're not toe dipping fully in your business, but you have like one foot in the water, one out. You are really not full in. You're trying to get the results you want, get the money you want, build the audience size you want without having to do the money moves, the scary money moves, the riskier money moves, meaning strategically investing money to grow your business and get help in your business, really learning and honing and intentionally creating content that converts, not just putting up pretty stuff and nice stuff and what other people do in your industry and good enough stuff, but really challenging yourself to connect better and better and better and passionately with your people, with your audience, with your potential buyers, with your current customers. And here are some examples of what I see being done. And what's so great, by the way, about my Project Me Posse business coaching membership, why it is world famous, and we have people that have been in there for years, is the level of accountability and the honesty that and the support that's in there is insane. And right now we have a summer sale where you select the annual option. You get two months for free. You get my Nail Your Niche Masterclass, which people paid over $500 to attend that. You get that. Plus you get my Instagram bio optimizer of how to strategically set up your bio, what the hell to put in your social media bios so that you are searchable. And this is insane. I mean, there's amazing proof of how this works in my life and many of my clients' lives and tons of proof inside the posse of you even switching a couple words and a couple things in different sections. You have people who can find you you know, right now you're actually working against yourself and you, you just don't realize it. And that's why I thought it was so important to have this wake up call episode. So in the posse, you're kept accountable. You're kept straight. I make sure that, you know, what are the income generating activities to focus on? What isn't that important right now? How to craft your offers, how to sell out your offers, what types of content to create in your limited time, how to start and grow an email list, how to add a product line to your business, how to do a course. I could go on and on. Plus all the manifestation trainings, all the abundance trainings, all the mindset trainings. And if you do the annual option, it's like $2 a day. Like it is truly a no brainer. Go make that move. Project me with Tiffany.com forward slash project me posse. As of the time of the recording, there's only a few new member spots left. If you go to check out on the page, when you go to check out, it'll pop up and say that it's full. If it's full, then you'll just have to check back. I would say every week or so we keep this membership capped, even though, yes, I could make a lot more money by opening up this membership to thousands of people, but in integrity, I wouldn't be able to call it a group coaching membership in my opinion. And that's what feels good and right to me. And it feels really good to the members too. So get in there, you know where to go. Also free gift to you. My summer abundance walking meditation series is here for free for a limited time. Swipe up. That's in the show notes. That's in the description on YouTube. It's at um, projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash summer abundance. So if you're driving, just remember projectmewithtiffany.com and it's summer abundance, summer abundance. You got to put the backslash. It will be in my um, Instagram and TikTok bot link in bio as well. Um, Cause I know a lot of you guys are multitasking. In fact, according to a survey, you got 70% of you are in the shower right now. And I delight in shower podcast listening. It is really a vibe. Also what you get when you join the posse, I'm showing it on YouTube right now on Project Media TV. You get my content creation made easy course bundle. So this comes with my exact content planner, fill in the blank, like posting template. You get so much stuff in here. I mean, and you get like my video training. It's, it's legit. I mean, this by itself is sold for hundreds of dollars and I'm gifting it to you for free. Okay. Let's get into this next thing that kind of is a good segue with what I just talked about. 
you're playing cheap with your business. I was going to try to figure out a way to say it nicer, but then that goes against everything I already said in the opening of the show. You're being a cheap ass. And I can say it because I've done it too. I, I've totally done it. And you're playing cheap because you're like so fixated on an ROI and you should look at an ROI and what you're spending. But a lot of times people get so fixated on wanting like, I need to know a tangible exact ROI. I need a guarantee. Here's what I can guarantee. You don't start investing in your business in being able to hone your skill set in order to market your services and have the visibility so people know you exist and people actually find your offers exciting and irresistible and have to haves versus an option. You are losing literally thousands and thousands of dollars a day, period, end of story. Like you have to look at what am I losing also by not doing this? Because there are no guarantees, just like there's no guarantees. Even if you had TV commercials, there's no guarantees that those are going to work. There's no guarantee. There's no like Facebook or TikTok ad strategy. That's a guarantee. The guarantee is if you don't do it, if you keep playing cheap, you're in a, you're in a scarcity, right? Like, oh, I'm going to wait until I'm making more money. I'm going to wait until I'm further along because I just started We've been getting feedback about my two-day upcoming in-person mastermind event, October 1st and 2nd here in Manhattan Beach, California. And we're about to open the registration page for it. There's 30 spots. Five are already taken by private clients at the time of this recording. And then the first 11 people are getting getting it for $1,000 off. But I've already gotten questions about it. And some people have said, Is it stupid for me to come to something like this when I'm like, I haven't made that much money in my business? Like, should I wait till I'm like more successful? And it's like, no, it's the opposite. I get it. I get why you're thinking that because I, that's why I didn't hire any coach to help me with my other business for my, for five years. I thought you had to be like rolling in the cash to like hire people like that or invest in that level, or you were being irresponsible. I made this up. I don't know where the hell I picked this up from. I made it up. Like, it's crazy what our brains make up. And it's like, no, if you were that heavily rolling in the cash and everything was as you would like, I mean, you might still come to my event because it's fun. It's inspiring. It absolutely will accelerate your abundance and your manifestations. You might come for that, but likely you wouldn't have that much of a pull or or a need. It's like, you come to me to make the coin, to shift the things, to learn the actual income generating actions and the technique and the strategy on what to do so you can make more and work less. But your mind gets all caught up in there that it sounds crazy. Like there's a reason there are business loans. There's a, re- I mean, think about that. I've, I don't know any real business that didn't use credit cards, that didn't use some form of a business loan, that didn't go to like a credit union or something to start it. Like, yes, there's a lot you can do, especially with an online business, like on the cheap, without a doubt. That's the beauty of it is you don't have to go and like rent a commercial space and buy a bunch of equipment. That's beautiful. But to think you don't have to to get to where you want to go faster and, and escalate it and shave off time and really generate that revenue in a faster way to think you don't have to invest invest in learning and honing your skills and improving these things, you've lost your mind. And again, I lost my mind too. And that's why I'm telling you this. There are times like there's, there's something right now that I could be doing in my business that I know absolutely would take this from being like a multi-billion, like it would take me from a seven figure to an eight figure business without a doubt. I know that granted no guarantees on the timing, but I know based on my strategy and what I teach that I invest in creating this funnel that involves ads and I put ad spend around it without a doubt. And I have at the level I'm at, and even though I have millions in the bank, I have resistance to it because I just invested $300,000 in another company as an investor. I just went on an an insane like $50,000 trip. 
I've spent, I have a lot of money I spent up front for the mastermind, bada dee da 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 do. I pay the team, I have all the things. I can come up with so many stories. But if I want what I want and I really want to take this to another level and help more people, and I want to be able to take it to even another level of passive income that I'm generating off this brand, you know, I, you know, I got to shit or get off the pot with this one thing. And I, and I will do it, but I wanted to hear, I wanted you to hear me that I can get into that spot. And it's like, well, if I know for a fact, it's going to work, I don't know the timing it'll work, but I know it will work. I might have to like massage and refine it. it might not work perfectly out of the gate because I'm not delusional and I don't fall for fantasy marketing anymore on this shit. And I know a lot of you guys have, especially in the ad space, but it's like you want a white knight to come in. And if you just do ads and you see other people doing ads and you just make this one course or this one masterclass, or you do this one or two things that it's going to flood in red fucking flag. I'm not saying you have to sit there and do a million things. I don't even work 40 hours a week. Okay. Like I work, I would say average 27 hours a week to generate millions of dollars a year. I think that's a pretty fair trade, but my ass does work. I do passive and active manifesting. And there's some part of you that really wants what you want. You look at like the lifestyle and the freedom I have. You look at other people's, you want it, but yet you're not truly taking the all in actions that those people have taken. Now, some of these people, right, have had a, a special leg up, right? Maybe they had a parent who was famous. Maybe they have a trust fund. Six, five, blue eyes, trust fund. I love that trending song. They might have a leg up in that way, but you have a leg up in a different way, okay? If you really want something and you have the desire, even if you're someone who's like, I'm not a very disciplined person, you have enough desire and a hunger for wanting a better life for yourself, for your family. You're wanting to reach more people and help more people, and it's really that strong, what are you willing to do that might feel temporarily uncomfortable to get it? Because if, if you know it's going to work, right, if you do believe it's going to work and you've seen enough evidence from other people that it does work, that it does exist, why wouldn't you do it? Because you don't think it's going to work for you or you're trying to protect yourself because you want it so badly and you're protecting yourself that if it doesn't work, you know, you'd be so devastated and disappointed. So one way to protect yourself is to not even try. Would you, I mean, that's not good. We, we you would never tell like a 12 year old, you know what? Like, I know you really want to make like the cheerleading team at school or the volleyball team. And I know how bad you want it and you dreamed of it, but like, I just don't even want you to try. Cause what if you don't make it? I mean, the stuff you say to yourself, you would never, you'd be horrified. In fact, it would be considered probably abuse if someone was saying this to a kid and this needs to stop. Third thing is there is a deeper fear, whether you're cognizant or not, of being seen on a bigger level. Your business has your business, your podcast, your platforms have only grown so far. They have grown and you do like the growth and you do like the money and you've had maybe successful career in other areas. You've had a successful career as a doctor, but now you want to have a successful career online and be able to not be trading all your time for money. You've had success doing these other things and you want to, you want to do this at this level. You want to monetize your gifts, passions, and talents online. You've had even success in that area. And yet you're not at the success that you're like, I, you really should, you kind of should be at. And it perplexes you how other people are there and not you. There is a fear of being seen that is holding you back. And like I said, you could come right back right now when you're listening to this. I don't have that. I'm very confident. I never said shit about confidence. I never said shit. 
I had a, I shouldn't even say had, but I, I, there is the fear of being seen with me ran deep, man. It ran deep. I didn't know I had it. I've talked about in other episodes. I have viral videos on TikTok all about it. There's episodes. There's a two-part series on the podcast about fear of being seen. You need to go listen to it. And I, I was trying to control my visibility because in how I grew up in childhood with a narcissist parent in a very abusive household, being seen too much equaled extreme danger. But I had to be seen at a certain level to appease the caregiver, the mom, but I couldn't super shine. And my business and my income reflected it. Very notable, very noteworthy, definitely impressive and solid, but not fuck you money, not fuck you freedom money, not Tiffany traipsing around Europe going whenever she wants, booked it at the last minute, paid a fucking damn fortune and knew I was paying a fortune and said, fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. Being able to not work for three weeks and still be making a hundred thousand dollar weeks, not that kind of money, but money where it was like, Oh, that's impressive. That's impressive. It was safe money for me. And everyone has a safe amount, even a safe audience size, a safe amount of notoriety, a safe visibility. And if you want to stay in that zone, you can, but I don't think you're listening to this episode because of that. And what ends up happening is you're playing it safe. You are doing a lot of like content that is only so deep. It doesn't have major emotional depth to it. It's not very polarizing. It's not very grabby. It looks like a lot of other people's. Maybe it is pretty. Maybe it's nice. Maybe it's interesting. Maybe it's delightful. That ain't going to cut it right? You have to be highly visible in order to get high sales. You have to be highly emotionally provoking. So make sure you're listening to um, Monday's episode of this week, because it goes with this. You have to be emotionally grabbing on a deep level in order to gain that intimacy and trust from someone quickly, a stranger to convert them to a buyer, period, end of story. There's a reason why people will buy tickets to my once a year, two day mastermind event from one video. We had five people last year that so it sold out in six days. We had five people who bought the last five tickets from one TikTok video. It wasn't some like sales video. None of my videos are like that. No, nope. it was because of the depth and the sincerity, me energetically not being performative and speaking and talking about things directly to my ideal client. Like you're intimately talking to a friend where you're saying, you know, listen, you know, listen, sis, or listen, sir, <laughs> listen, here's, here's what's up. Okay. Like this whole episode is in that cadence. Here's what's up. and, and being okay with, you might not like it. I might, I'm too direct for some people. Some people want to be coddled. Some people, and I would still say I'm very, anyone who's coaching me would say I'm fucking loving. I'm gentle. I'm like the power lead cheerleader. I've got your motherfucking back. I'm the, I'd bail your ass out of jail. Okay. Like I'm that person, but I'm also not going to coddle you and enable you to stay where you're at. Some people like going to people like that and listening to people like that in any industry because it doesn't require them to grow. There are people who avoid working with me and some of these people are listening now and I know who you are and I'm saying it with love. Like some of these people like have met me in person many times and they use lots of things as excuses. I, they'll say, I know I need to hire you, but I've spent so much money lately on a photographer and on this and on that. And I know I need to hire you. I'm just so like busy right now. I never pitch myself to these fucking people. I don't need to, we, we don't need to do that. Right. And they say that 
And the reality is it's not about that. I have people who go take out loans. I have people who go take second jobs or do things like house sitting and dog walking, use PayPal credit, use credit cards in order to work with me. And with all of my clients from all different specialties, from my mindset coaches, relationship coaches, to people who do trauma healing, to people who do mindset work, who people who do, um, you know, health coaching. When someone really wants the result and wants the thing and is willing to do whatever it takes and you're their person and they know it, even if they're scared, even if they're nervous, they're, you're going to make a move and find a way. And if you're not making a move, that's why I'm saying you need to have an honest conversation with yourself or with a therapist. Okay. You know, why are you not making that move? I mean, we have these conversations in my posse membership a lot. I can't remember if I said this partially because I feel like I'm in a sauna and I am sweating profusely right now and dehydrated in order for you to get first dibs and even be able to um, register for my two-day in-person event, you have to be on my secret posse um, VIP email list. So it is my secret posse weekly digest, projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash secret posse. That is linked in the show notes. You can look at the description on YouTube. If you are a private client of mine, you get first dibs on the spots. And the first 11 spots, remember, you get a 1,000 off. And then the second round of, of first dibs are to my posse members. So all the links to all the things, including my free gift, my summer abundance walking series are in the show notes for you. I could like, here is an example for my therapist. Okay. Like I could have, I could have picked a therapist that was just someone who was going to listen to me and someone who's going to cheer me on but that's not going to help me grow. You know, I want a therapist who wasn't going to be intimidated by me or kind of like, not that I'm a star, but you know what I mean? Like starstruck by my podcast. And I believe me, I've had this shit happen where they don't give a shit about any of that. They are willing to say the hard things with me and bring up the hard questions and discussions and call me out with love for my greatest growth. Those are the only coaches I hire for myself. And if you're avoiding doing that and yet you're spending money on other shit, what's going on? Do you not really want it? And what it typically is, is that fear of being seen is underneath there or you're afraid of what you really want, you not being capable of it, you falling short, you absolutely spiraling out, you not being able to hack it. And there's part of you where it's easier to just then not do it all and make excuses for yourself. But that's living in purgatory. That is an exhausting place to live. I want you to live in acceptance of wherever you're at in your business. Live in acceptance, even if it's about a goal of yours that has to do maybe with like your physical health, live in acceptance and say, you know what, me growing my business, me changing my lifestyle, me creating an abundant life, me being able to have freedom level cash and, you know, making a business out of this and having it grow and doing all the things that's simply not a priority enough for me right now to be uncomfortable and be in acceptance for that right now. I'm not judging you right? Or say, it's just not that important to me. Because if it was that fucking important to you, you would find a way because there's always a fucking way. And I get to say that because I have a lot of adversity, you know, like it says in the show opener, the odds were against me and still are against me. I have one living family member I'm no contact with. I have complex PTSD. I have depression. I have anxiety. I am not a super techie person. I am not book smart. I am an introvert. I have a very small inner circle. I didn't know one damn person who had a podcast. I didn't know one damn person who truly had like an online business. I knew a lot of like 
obviously brick and mortar business owners, a lot of execs at companies from having my agency that it's a digital marketing agency in the health supplement and pharmaceutical space. I've had 16 years. That's an eight figure business. I knew those people, but not doing this and certainly not living the life of making more and working less. There was no one that fucking shouted me out. I never, no one threw my ass a bone. And I know some of you are kind of secretly waiting for that. Like you're waiting to go viral. You're kind of hoping for it. You want to be, you want a magic wand to tap you on the shoulder. You want something or someone to save you. And then you fall for fantasy marketing on things and get more and more upset when it doesn't work. You've got to go. I want it. I'm going after it. I'm pulling up my pants. I'm making the shit happen. I'm doing it. And I'm going to delight in doing it even while I'm terrified. There are some of you who listen to the whole like feminine, masculine energy. Oh, that sounds so masculine and so heavy. You'd be very careful of that. That's another way your ego can trick you. If you have, it's yin and yang, sweetie. That's the same thing as masculine and feminine. We've all got both of it. It is a dance. So when people are like, I just want to sit back in my feminine and have everything come to me. No, that's called fucking entitlement. Okay. So a feminine energy, whether you're a male or female, whatever you identify as, you're a fucking badass. And what does a badass do? What does a leader do? What does someone do who wants to collectively help the universe rise and expand? What does someone do who wants to attract high quality people and help people with whatever it is that you do and make money helping your family being able to donate that doesn't happen while you get to like sit back and just like oh I'm just gonna like sit back and manifest and it needs to feel aligned I love you and I wish it happened that way. And I'm not, I, I teach manifestation, but a lot of you are so stuck in the passive manifesting and it's funny what will happen once you make a bold money move, you'll see your money start to shift in your favor. Once you make the move, the universe is waiting on your ass to make a move. The money's already there. The abundance is already there. You haven't made the move. You're trying to have your cake and eat it too, right? You want to feel safe and secure and not stressed and comfy, cozy and want all the things. It just doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that in any area of your life. Shake it up. I need you to have a ZFG summer. You want a rich bitch summer? You need to have a ZFG summer. And when you step into the zero fucks given version of you, what does that version of you talk about online? What kinds of emails does that version of you send? What kind of offers does that version of you put together? What kind of products does that version of you sell? What kind of videos and branding and messaging and actions does that ZFG version of you create? That's where your abundance is. You're playing it too safe. You don't want to be canceled. You don't want to leave anyone out. You want to help all the people, but you try to help all the people. You help none of the people. You don't want to do too much because you already feel burned out and then you're all over the place and then you make no moves. If you do not share things with a potency How would you expect to stand out in your space and grab people's attention when people's attention spans are so short right now, including yours, and be able to grab them? You don't have to shake your ass. You don't need to be a beauty queen. You don't need to be some influencer. You don't need to be a multi-zillionaire. You need to be the ZFG you. The real you is so potent your real heart, your real, you're an empath, your empath energy, your, your weirdness, your quirkiness, your craziness, your, your, your passion for certain things. You showcase that stuff and you showcase it without putting a film over it. 
without putting a filter over it, without watering it down because you don't want to upset anybody. And what would so-and-so think? And, oh my God, my mom hates when I talk about family stuff. She says it's no one's business. And then, oh, my aunt so-and-so says like, oh, you share too much and blah, 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 blah. And what will the people at my work think? And what will the people from high school think? Fuck them. And even even if it's your partner, fuck them too. I'm being serious. If you're in integrity and you're being truly yourself and you're wanting to do something to better your life and better other people's lives and find fulfillment financially, intellectually, creatively, and this is something you want to do that you're feeling called to do right now, don't allow their opinions or other people's potential opinions of you or what they may or may not do stop you. I allowed that for 10 fucking years. And I can tell you it cost me at least $10 million because if I had started this podcast when podcasts were first a thing, oh my God, I would have a Spotify deal right now without a doubt. And I will get one without a doubt, but I would have it. But I was so worried. Who do I think I am? What if my mom listens to the show and she sues me? What are people going to think from college? Like, oh, Tiffany, like, thinks she's a fucking celebrity now. People joked when I even started in 2018, like, that you were a wackadoo to have a podcast. I was considered a wackadoo as a female to be an entrepreneur 16 years ago. This was not hot by the way, 16 years ago, there was no boss babe term. You were a wackadoo, especially when you had a corporate career that was prestigious and you made the coveted six figures with a benefit package. And you're leaving that industry. In my case, the pharmaceutical industry, you're leaving the medical industry when you have like a management fancy title as a national sales director, you have a fancy title and you have a corporate credit card. I even had a company car and a company laptop and all this shit. And you're going to leave that to start a business. I couldn't get a fucking loan. I had to use credit card. Thankfully, I had pretty good credit. No one would loan me money like for to create a digital marketing company, to create a marketing business. Are you joking? <laughs> And now I have banks constantly contacting me, wanting to me to get a business loan from them. It's just funny. I mean, I had a hard time getting guests when I first started my podcast. People were like, what the fuck is this? This is a weird ass thing. I mean, I can tell you in 2018, 19, even early 2020, celebrities were not doing podcast circuit interviews. That was not a vibe. Their agents were like, that's kind of beneath you. You know, that's not what you really want to be doing. Mm, now look at all the celebrities having podcasts. Isn't that funny? Do the damn thing. You have no idea how long you're here and think about your kids, other people in your life, strangers that you're going to give permission to by you going all in, but taking half measures on a dream is the biggest fucking waste of time. It's an all in play. And I don't mean all in like self-sacrificing, grinding away 80 hours a week. You, that's not what I'm about. I've already told you I work an average of 27 hours a week when, when I am working. I just got back from a three week full thing that I didn't do shit. Okay. It's like, what? It's an all in play. You're all in energetically. You're willing to take the risk. I'm doing the thing. You doing the push and pull. I've got my foot on the gas and the foot on the brake. What happens to a car? It stalls. And if you were, if you're in a car and you put on the gas and you put on the brake, you've, all of you have driven with somebody who's like that. You get car sick. It's stressful. It's terrible. It's like a worst ride of your life. That's what you're doing to yourself. You're making it so much harder because I know you want the thing and you want it at the next level and you want it, want the ease and you want the people to flow in. It's all there. It's that you're the cog in it. You're in the way. And if you need help getting out of the way, I just gave you several options to do so. I mean, this podcast is obviously a great start and likely a wake up call. 
but you can join the posse. You can make sure you're on the email, the VIP email list so that you, and make sure you keep an eye out and look in your spam email that my emails aren't going in there because I cannot add more spots. Like once we're sold out, we're sold out. This is an in-person event. I only do it once a year, October 1st and 2nd here in Manhattan Beach, California. This will be an investment. Number one, it's a tax write-off. Not that I'm an accountant, but any accountant would agree with me. You are learning from a top tier marketing strategist and you get my entire Project Me team. We are doing income generating transformational activities and teaching you a skill of how to master the mind and how to master your business. There is no way you put that to use that you won't get wild results for decades to come as long as you put it to use. And really, it would be very rare for someone to actually dedicate that time and be immersed in this energy for two days and then end up doing nothing with it. That would be very odd, especially when we make it fun, especially when we make it simple and straightforward. Make a damn money move and make some bolder moves online. What would the ZFG version of you start saying, start doing, start offering? I know you know that. There is, that's in you. What is it? Are there things that you watch other people do and you go, I wish I could do that. Maybe they, they're cooking while they're talking. They do the get ready with me's. Maybe it's my crazy dancing videos. Then fucking do it. If that's, if that is something that you, and then you say, I wish I could be able to do it. The only thing that's between you actually doing it is you giving yourself permission to do it and permission to look stupid. And so what? what people think. I mean, sometimes I get rattled when people are really fucking nasty, but it's only one to 3% of people. The other 97% of people are loving and beautiful and grateful and care. Go listen to that two-part series in the fear of being seen. Maybe you have listened to it, but this is probably a sign you need to re-listen to it because otherwise a watered down version of you that's not bright. Um, that's not bold. That's not abundant enough to get someone's attention to know you exist and to get them to stop and watch you long enough to know how you can help them or even get to know you on a more intimate level so that they trust you so that they'll buy from you. Do you see what I'm saying here? wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. If you appreciated this straight up talk, please go leave a five-star written review of the show on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on Project Me TV on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed, share it, comment, put some activity on it. You're listening on Spotify, tap the five stars. Let me know. And any subject you want me to give you the low down T straight up advice on, you can always DM me on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. And you can always reply to any of our emails and say, I would love an episode on Tiffany giving, serving it straight on blank. And it can literally be any, there's nothing off the table. Well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> there's definitely some things. There's some things that are off the table. I'd have to have like a specialized only, only fan site for, okay? But you know what I'm saying. All right. Love you guys.